Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Journalism and New Media Studies, SOJNMS, Diploma, Postgraduate Diploma Programs, Postgraduate Diploma in Development Communication, PGDDC, Core Courses, CC, MDC 001 Fundamentals of Development and Communication, Block 1 Development, An Overview, Unit 1 Development, Concepts and Paradigms. Concepts and Paradigms. 1.0 Introduction. Development is an easy word to say, but a difficult and complicated one to define. Although the term is used abundantly in common parlance, as well as in academic discourse, yet, its definition has always remained as a debated issue amongst social scientists. However, development, and its related terms, remains fundamental to contemporary thinking. 1.1 Learning Outcomes After going through this unit, you should be able to define development and paradigm of development, and discuss various development paradigms. 1.2 Development, its meaning and variance. After the Second World War, and, with the independence of the Asian and African countries from colonial rule, the developmental priorities of these nations became subjects of study of the USA and other Western countries. Since the per capita real income in all these countries was conspicuously low, high priority was given to developmental programs which could help Asian and African countries realize the maximum possible growth rate. In this process, several factors cropped up, such as education, health, sanitation, poverty eradication, and malnutrition. It was in this connection that the importance of development was realized. Development is no longer considered to be the same as growth, as it was earlier perceived by the developed world. Development economists are no longer impressed by the growth performance of the economy reflected in terms of rise in GNP, rather, they concentrate more directly on development processes. The differences between the terms, growth, and development, urged social scientists to begin to define the term, development. Development and its related terms remain fundamental to contemporary thinking. There is no agreement among developmental thinkers regarding a common definition of development. Some say it is an increase in income and productivity while others lay emphasis on the quality of life, provision of basic needs, happiness, and well-being. Some of the definitions of development, given by a few developmental economists are discussed below. Gunnar Meidel, 1960, treats development as an upward movement of the whole social system by providing better living conditions, viz. Adequate food, better housing, improved facilities for health, education and training, and the general improvement of cultural facilities, which are all desirable. According to Bernstein, 1973, development embodies a value judgment, as it encompasses the desirability for overcoming malnutrition, poverty, and diseases which are the most immediate and widespread aspects of human suffering. In positive terms, it advocates a commitment to development that transcends the limiting term of economic growth to embrace such features as social justice, equality of opportunity, full employment, equitable distribution of income, and basic political freedom. The International Labour Organization, ILO, 1976, insists on incorporating the basic needs strategy in the development plans for developing countries. First, a plan should include the minimum requirements of a family for private consumption, adequate food, shelter, and clothing, and the necessary household equipment and furniture. Second, it would include essential services provided by, and for, the community, such as safe drinking water, sanitation, public transport, and health and education facilities. According to Sayers, 1979, the three additional requirements for the use of the term development are a decrease in poverty and malnutrition, a decline in inequality, and improvement in the employment situation. According to Mayer, 1995, development means growth plus change. There are essential quality dimensions in the development process that extend beyond the growth or expansion of an economy through a simple widening process. According to Amartya Sain, 1999, a country can grow rapidly but still do badly in terms of literacy, health and life expectancy. Sain interprets development as a process that expands what he terms, the entitlements and capabilities, of the people. He opined that instead of concentrating on national product or aggregate income, development economists should concentrate on the entitlements of people and the capabilities these entitlements generate. According to Cypher and Deeds, 2009, development incorporates the diverse and broad aspirations of, what might be called, the, good life, in all its economic, social, and political dimensions. They were of the view that development is about realizing very fundamental human values, and finding the means to extend the fruits of these values to the greatest majority of the world's population. 
According to Tadaro, development is both a physical reality and a state of mind in which society has, through some combination of social, economic, and institutional processes, secured the means for obtaining a better life. In order to achieve development, all society must have at least the following three objectives. 1. To increase the availability and widen the distribution of basic life-sustaining goods such as food, shelter, health, and protection to all members of society. 2. To raise levels of living, higher incomes, provide more jobs, better education, and more attention to cultural and humanistic values. These all are required not only to enhance material well-being but to generate greater individual and national self-esteem. 3. To expand the range of economic and social choice to individuals and nations by freeing them from servitude and dependence, not only in relation to other people, nations, and states, but to the forces of ignorance and human misery. Ardisheshia termed development, growth with social justice. Ardisheshia, in the 1960s, extended the Harrod Doomer model by including various other dimensions of development. The model as written by him is Y1 equals F, L1, K1, T1, R1, S1. Y1 equals the total output during a period of time. TL1 equals labor. K1 equals capital. T1 equals technical knowledge. R1 equals natural resources. S1 equals all social, educational, cultural and political factors. According to Adisheshia, 1990, development is the removal of poverty, unemployment, inequality, illiteracy, and ill health, and is one of ensuring participation in government. The Millennium Development Goals declared by the United Nations General Assembly on September 8, 2000 delineate the paradigm of development for the nation-state. Those are Group 1, Eradication of Extreme Poverty and Hunger Group 2, Achieve Universal Primary Education Group 3, Promote Gender Equity and Empower Women Group 4, Reduce Child Mortality Group 5, Improve Maternal Health Group 6, Combat HIV, AIDS, Malaria and Other Diseases Group 7, Ensure Environmental Sustainability Group 8, Develop a Global Partnership for Development Thus, from this review, it is clearly observed that development is not merely raising economic growth, but that it goes much beyond it, and economic growth is one of the components. Some of the important components of development could be Increase in income and productivity Increase in social welfare through the provision of better healthcare and education Increased access to basic needs, i.e., food, clothing, and shelter. Enhanced choices and opportunities. Increase in income and employment opportunities. Reduction of disparities. Enhanced quality of life of the people by way of increased and improved social services. Reduction of poverty, malnutrition, and diseases. Increased access to potable drinking water and sanitation. Provision of infrastructure facilities for better living conditions such as road, electricity, and information gadgets. After reading this section, you will have gained an idea about the term, development, its meaning and variance. Check your progress 1. 1. Development is a multidimensional concept, illustrate. 2. Discuss various components of development. 1.3 Development Paradigms Thomas Kuhn in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, tried to popularize the term paradigm. According to Kuhn, a paradigm is a universally recognized scientific achievement that, for a time, provides model problems and solutions to a community of practitioners. Kuhn used the term paradigm due to the tremendous shift in the scientific worldview, from the mechanistic approach of Newton to the realistic one of Einstein. Hussein, 2003, has remarked that a paradigm, according to Kuhn, is a framework of thought within which questions are posed and answers pursued. In other words, a development paradigm is a way of perceiving development in terms of its manifestations, process, and causes through a certain prism. According to Sato and Smith, ODII, 1993, a paradigm shift in development, to be minimally consistent with Kuhn's concept, would need to meet three conditions. 1. It must provide a meta-theory, that is, one that serves to explain many other theories. 2. It must be accepted by a community of practitioners. And, 3. It must have a body of successful practice, exemplars, that are held up as, paradigms, in practice. To them and according to meta-theory, development should be people-centered, democratically organized, responsive to the whole environment, not only the ecological and the economic, but also the political, social and cultural and balanced, for example between center and periphery, between public and private, between the roles of men and women. The Johannesburg Growth and Development Strategy outline, development paradigm as an in-principle argument for how to conceptualize and overcome the development challenges confronting nations.
Some of the principles which they included are sustainable and inclusive development, basic needs, a focus on people and not on place, and decentralized development strategies. The ODII, Organizing for Development, an international institute, report, while defining the term, development paradigm, has mentioned that, development must be human-centered, coming from within, rather than imposed from the outside. In addition, the center of effort in development needs to shift from resource-based strategies to interactive or participative strategies. Bellu, 2011, while defining development paradigm, noted that development was very rarely considered to be a God-given condition of socioeconomic system, implying that policymakers at national and international level have always thought that some activities were required to promote positive changes. V.R. Panchamukhi, in his article, New Paradigms of Development, has the following observations about development. 1. Development can no longer be identified as a process of shifting surplus labor from agriculture to the industrial sectors. 2. Growth is no longer the guarantor for trickle-down effects. 3. Market as an instrument for ensuring optimum allocation of resources has been discredited. 4. Concepts such as take-off, big push, great support, backward and forward linkages, have also lost their essence. Therefore, he said that simplistic paradigms of the development economics are no longer valid. The existence of large pockets of poverty, despite a long period of planned development, widening gaps between the haves and have-nots, neglect of the inadequacies of the social aspects of development, such as education, health, and other basic needs, have cast doubts on the utility of received paradigms of development. Development, in the sense customarily perceived as growth and increase in income, no longer persists. Some of the facets of the development paradigm are Development not only means the increase of GNP, but includes aspects such as social, human, cultural, and political dimensions. The focus has shifted from the one-sector model to dual-sector models, for example, rural-urban, agriculture and industry linkages, ETC. The shift from a centralized to a decentralized model, for faster development. Inclusive development, where every individual participates in development processes, and exclusion is minimal. Linkages of the national economy with the international economies, and the role of FDI in development of the developing economy. Development with a humane face removing poverty, hunger, and human misery from society. Different paradigms of development are as follows. Less consumerism and more welfare paradigm. At the outset, the modern philosophy of development intends to enhance human well-being. In other words, it wants to move from consumerism towards welfare and from the concentration of wealth towards the dissemination of wealth. Consumerism is guided by selfish motives leading to malpractice and distortions of the market. The use of terms such as, creative capitalism, or benevolent capitalism, are steps towards moving away from the consumerism of an elite group, voluntary or forced, either of which would be suitable strategies for better distribution of the benefits of growth. The existing development paradigm has made man largely into an economic species by making him more and more materialistic, individualistic, and self-created. Mahatma Gandhi once said that, complete non-possession is an abstraction. It can never be fully realized. There, is a distinction between possession and possessiveness. The evil lies not in possession as such, but in possessiveness it is this, possessiveness, which is the root cause of conflict. Consumerism, in general, and imitative consumerism, in particular, has brought about distortions in the pattern of development. In the words of J.R.D. Tata, industrial enterprise, whether in the private or the public sector, can and could do much within their means to improve the conditions of life of the surrounding population, relieve distress where it exists, help find work for the unemployed and extend a helping hand to those who need it. In the new paradigm of development, economic growth, consisting of the accumulation of wealth and gross national product, would not be considered as sole objectives of development, the human development paradigm. Human beings are the key factors of development. The concept of human capital came into the development arena in the 1960s. It emphasized the quality of human capital, their skills and education, for the generation of wealth, and for the accumulation of capital. Education is regarded as a means of differentiation of labor skills through making use of one's mental and physical talents, or, by developing new ones, which enable one person to differentiate his labor from that of others, Adishishya, 1990. Thus, education is the seed as well as the flower of development. The income and wealth of a person would be better enhanced, not by the accumulation of wealth, but by the accumulation of knowledge. Developed countries like the US, Japan, and South Korea have grasped the importance of human capital, better than developing countries.
the per capita expenditure on education and the expenditure on education as a percentage of GDP are much higher in developed countries compared to that of developing countries. Harbinson, 1973, says, human resources constitute the ultimate basis for the wealth of nations. Capital and resources are passive factors of production. Human beings are the active agents who accumulate capital, exploit natural resources, build social, economic and political organizations and carry forward national development. Human resource development is one of the pivotal aspects of development, which promote economic, social and all other development. Human capital plays a significant role in simulating growth. It is the quality of the human beings that counts. It is man who builds up the wealth and fabric of a nation. The UNDP launched its first Human Development Report in 1990 and constructed a composite index called the Human Development Index, HDI. The three important components of HDI are, life expectancy representing a long and healthy life, literacy educational attainment, and, real GDP representing a decent standard of living. UNDP, 2001, has envisaged that human development is about much more than the rise and fall of national incomes. It is about creating an environment in which people can develop that potential, and lead productive and creative lives according to their needs and interests. It considers that the people are the real wealth of a nation. The National Human Development Report 2001, Government of India, had a consensus and a broad-based view about human development. It viewed development in terms of three critical dimensions of well-being, those that are related to long life, the ability to live long and healthy lives, education ability to read, write, and acquire knowledge, and, command over resources, the ability to enjoy a decent standard of living, and have socially meaningful life. Basic Needs Paradigm The basic needs approach is an attempt to deal directly with poverty in the fields of food, nutrition, sanitation, health, education, and housing. The ILO, International Labour Organization, has indicated two crucial elements in the basic needs approach. One, first, they include certain minimum requirements of a family for private consumption, i.e., adequate food, shelter, and clothing, as well as certain household equipment and furniture, and, two, second, they include essential services provided by, and, for the community at large, such as safe drinking water, sanitation, public transport, health, education and cultural facilities. Todaro, 1977, mentioned that development in all societies must have at least the following three objectives, 1, to increase the availability and widen the distribution of basic life-sustaining goods such as food, shelter, health, and protection, 2, to raise the level of living including, in addition to higher incomes, the provision of more jobs, better education and greater attention to cultural and humanistic values, all of which will serve not only to enhance material well-being but also to generate greater individual and national self-esteem, and, 3, to expand the range of economic and social choices available to individuals and nations by freeing them from servitude and dependence, not only in relation to other people, but also to the forces of ignorance and human misery. Social Development Paradigm Social development is not only influenced by economic development, it also influences economic development. Social indicators such as education, health, women's empowerment, and participation by the socio-economically backward people in the development process would promote faster development. Therefore, social inclusion is, today, considered as one of the important factors of growth and development. The welfare of women and children is not only the responsibility of the family but also of society and the nation. Therefore, national and international agencies have launched many programs for the welfare of women and children. The Integrated Child Development Scheme, ICDAs, launched in many developing countries with the support of UNICEF, is an example of preschool education and health care of children, and nutritional care of children and lactating mothers is one of such examples. It is realized that human, or, social capital seems to be more significant for development than material resources. In recent years, social capital has become one of the important dimensions of human inputs in community development and well-being. Moreover, social development is influenced by the social norms, values, traditions, etc., which influence development, directly, or, indirectly. Maiti in his book, Development Ethics, gives eight components of social capital described in Figure 1. Look at the screen. Figure 1 Social Capital. All eight components of social capital play an important role in the development processes. Social capital must be emphasized for the speedy socioeconomic development of a nation. The Agriculture Industry Interface Paradigm Development requires a frequent, equity-based interaction between agriculture and industry. 
In the dualistic growth models, the relationship between subsistence agriculture and manufacturing industry is rarely established to augment growth and development. The modern industrial sector develops by importing labor, capital and raw materials, while agriculture remains a subsistent activity. There is poor connection between agriculture and industry. Customarily, the connection between agriculture and industry is established by the use of unskilled and semi-skilled labor force from agriculture to be used in the industrial sector. In this setup, economic growth and development are referred to as the transfer of the labor force from subsistence agriculture to the market-oriented industrial sector. In other words, this implies that industry is associated with everything that is modern and growing, and agriculture is traditional and stagnant. Agriculture is largely treated as low in productivity, while industry is high in productivity. In other words, industry is considered to be the big brother in the process of development. As a result, in many developing countries, the contribution of the industrial sector is seen to be increasing, while the contribution of the agricultural sector to GDP is either constant, or, slow, or even, diminishing. As industrial employment goals and per capita income expand, the urban demand for agricultural products increases. This requires a market-oriented agricultural growth and historically this happens only in a few countries where agriculture faces genuine negligence. Agricultural economists cite the example of Japan from the Meiji Revolution to World War I, when agriculture and industrial development went forward. Concurrently, therefore, for balanced development, both agriculture and industry must be interdependent and help one another for their mutual promotion. An example of triangular trade-off between agriculture, industry, and the rest of the world is the Brazilian growth process, from the 1930s to the early 1960s, which is described in Figure 2. Figure 1.2 Brazilian pattern of trade between agriculture, industry and the rest of the world. Look at the screen. In this model, agriculture, A, sells coffee to the world, W, and buys manufacturing products from industry, I, which, in turn, requires capital goods from foreign markets. Another type of interlink between agriculture and industry is the establishment of agro-processing industries for the advancement of agriculture. Figure 1.3, the interlinks between agriculture and industry. Look at the screen. The effective linkage between the agriculture and industries is, today, a development agenda pursued by countries for the concurrent development of both agriculture and industry. Unless strong linkages are established and maintained between agriculture and industry, either sector will face demand bottlenecks, thereby retarding the overall pace of growth and development we are. Panchamukhi, 1990, in his analysis remarks that for a large number of developing countries, from 1970 to 1984, there is a significant positive relationship between the growth rate of GDP and the strength of linkages between manufacturing and agriculture, as measured by the elasticity of manufacturing GDP, with respect to agriculture GDP. Therefore, it is being increasingly realized that the strength of the agriculture industry linkages influences the pace of development, and weak linkages between agriculture and industry would have detrimental effects on both the sectors, as well as on the economy. In the new paradigm of development, this is given serious consideration. Decentralization and development paradigm. Decentralization of functions, functionaries, and funds to the local self-governments has proved to be an effective strategy for development in many countries. The local government declaration to the World Summit on Sustainable Development, held in 2002, maintains that, we live in an increasingly interconnected, interdependent world. Local government cannot afford to be insular and inward-looking. In the Indian context, Gandhiji maintained that, independence must begin at the bottom, and every village will be a republic of panchayats having full powers. It is, therefore essential, that every village has to be self-sustained and capable of maintaining its affairs even against the whole world. It will be trained and prepared to inclusive development paradigm. The concept of inclusive growth and development has gained wider emphasis in many countries, particularly in developing countries, including India. The UNDP, 2008, has defined inclusive growth, laying emphasis on the production and income side of GDP as, the process and the outcome, where all groups of people have participated in the organization of growth, and have benefited from it. Thus, inclusive growth represents an equation with organization on the left-hand side and benefits on the right-hand side. Inclusive growth is achieving a growth process in which people in different walks in life participate and benefit from the process of growth and development. In inclusive development, contributions made by each individual are valued. Thus, inclusive growth, by very definition, implies an equitable allocation of resources with benefits accruing to every section of the society. Inclusive development can have several dimensions as given below. 
It is a development process in which every individual feels included. It includes the excluded groups such as women, disabled and other marginalized sections in the process of development. They not only receive benefits, they also contribute equally to growth and development. They are not treated as passive beneficiaries of the fruits of development, but are active participants in the development process. It gives equal emphasis to both rural and urban development. The urban bias is minimized and an equal emphasis is placed on the balanced development of both rural and urban sectors. In inclusive development, all the sectors, both formal, as well as informal, are equally empowered to contribute towards development. The countries experiencing exclusions in different forms, i.e., 1. Regional, 2. Social exclusion within the region, and 3. Sectoral exclusion must be done away with, as this leads to inequality. This needs to be understood in the context of access to opportunities in labor markets, access to benefits from the service delivery mechanism, and access to political processes. The process of development creates opportunity for the poor and downtrodden to participate in the process of development. The inclusive development believes that the economic growth achieved through social exclusion can be neither economically nor socially sustainable. Only the broadest social participation involving education, health, and habitation will enable a nation to achieve viable, sustainable, and equitable development. It can be said that the greatest challenge facing today's government is to present a united front to address shared problems. In other words, inclusive development means development for all, and all for development. Development with a human face paradigm. A landmark development in the formulation and recognition of new human rights is the Declaration of the Right to Development, adopted by the UN General Assembly on 4 December 1986. The declaration recognized that development is a comprehensive, economic, social, cultural, and political process which aims at the constant improvement of the well-being of all, and of all individuals on the basis of their active, free, and meaningful participation in development, and, in the fair distribution of benefits resulting therefrom. The declaration envisages that nations have the right, and a duty to formulate appropriate national development policies that aim at constant improvement of the well-being of the entire population. Development with a human face means the removal of poverty, hunger, child labor, human morbidities, and preventable diseases. It further means that the rich should invest their resources for the well-being of the poorest of the poor, which can be called benevolent capitalism. It calls for pro-poor policies. Jawaharlal Nehru's speech which was delivered in the midnight of the Day of Independence was a clear message for development with a human face. Nehru said, The service of India means the service of the millions who suffer. It means the ending of poverty, ignorance, and diseases, and inequality of opportunity. The ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye. That may be beyond us, but as long as there are tears and sufferings, so long our work will not be over. Thus, the greatest challenge before the nation is to have an agenda of development with a human face, i.e., to energize the economic, social, political and administrative system which delivers with a human face, working towards the well-being of the downtrodden, socio-economically backward sections, the disabled, and other excluded groups. The International Economic Relationship Paradigm Today, we recognize that we live in a global economy and that no country can remain the link from the rest of the world. The developed countries, through different multilateral organizations, are investing a lot of money for the economic and social development of developing countries. The impact of FDIs on various sectors of development is visible in many developing countries. Kruger, 1978, Bhagwati, 1985, and Sachs and Warner, 1995, stressed that countries that started exporting early, pursued sober macroeconomic policies, and depreciated their exchange rates performed much better, economically, than other countries. However, many exponents believe that reforms should be owned by developing countries, rather than being imposed by an outside donor. Dogmatic imposition of free market reforms by the international institutions, especially with regard to the free movement of capital, threatens the growth prospects of developing countries. However, in spite of these debates, the relationship between aid flows and development are stronger after liberalization, privatization and globalization adopted by various countries, since the beginning of the 1990s. Globalization, the process which integrates economies across the world through global trade and investment, has become an economic reality for almost all countries. Table 1.1, FDI inflow to India from 1999 to 2016, million dollar. Year and million of dollar. 1990, 2000, 1705 million of dollar. 2005, 6598 million of dollar. 2011, 36190 million of dollar. 
2013-2014-2015-2016 million of dollar 2013-2014-2015-2016 million of dollar 2014-2015-2016 million of dollar 2014-2015-2016 million of dollar 2014-2015-2016 million of dollar the sustainable development paradigm Sustainable development emerged as an important theme of development in 1987. The Brundtland Commission on Environment and Development, in its report, Our Common Future, called for the application of sustainability as a criterion for all development initiatives. The Commission said that, in order for development to be sustainable, it must meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Sustainable development has two important goals. 1. Basic needs for all human beings, i.e., food, clothing, shelter, education, health, and social security, and 2. It must maintain ecological balance. In order to achieve this goal all nations and their people need to join hands. Thus, sustainable development can be looked at from a variety of perspectives, such as environmental, economic, social, political, cultural, and technological. The Bruntal and Report envisaged that sustainable development requires 2. A political system that secures effective citizen participation in decision-making. 3. An economic system that is able to generate surpluses and technical knowledge on self-reliant and sustained basis. 4. A social system that provides for solutions. 5. For the tensions arising from disharmonious development. 6. A production system that respects the obligations to preserve that ecological base of development. 7. A technological system that can search continuously for new solutions. 8. An international system that offers sustainable pattern of trade and finance. 9. An administrative system that is flexible, and has the capacity of self-correction. Sustainable development is a holistic approach towards development, where the sustainable development vision is shared by the sectors, nations and people. It presupposes that the actors of sustainable development are interdependent, and not independent. Sustainable Development Goals On 25th of September 2015,193 countries of the United Nations General Assembly adopted the 2030 Development Agenda named as Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The 17 identified sustainable development goals are as follows. 1. End poverty in all its forms everywhere. 2. End hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. 3. Ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. 4. Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. 5. Achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. 6. Ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. 7. Ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. 8. Promote sustained, inclusive and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. 9. Build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. 10. Reduce inequality within and among countries. 11. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. 12. Ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. 13. Take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. 14. Conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. 15. Protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. 16. Promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. 17. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. From these various goals it can be concluded that various indicators of sustainable development are poverty, inequality, literacy and education, health, morbidity and mortality, social justice, climate change and environment, women empowerment, food security and sustainable energy. Table 1.2. Sustainable Development Goals Index, 2017. Look at the screen. The sustainable development goals of different countries shows that all the developed countries of Europe rank high in achieving sustainable development goals. The Asian in general and the South Asian countries are lagging far behind. Poverty Reduction Paradigm At the Millennium Summit 2000, the international community agreed on the Millennium Development Goals, including halving the proportion of the world's population living in extreme poverty, by 2015. 
more than half of the populations in the developing countries, around 2.8 billion, are living on less than US $2 a day. How to scale up the fight against global poverty is a new development paradigm of the new millennium. Here, scaling up means formulating and implementing programs, policies, or projects in different places over time and space to fight against poverty. Even replications of good practices are recommended. Here are a few examples of poverty reduction projects, or programs, prepared by Wolfenson, 2004. In Northeast Brazil, a decade of piloting and expanding rural community-driven programs has benefited some 7.5 million rural poor, and resulted in 35,000 community associations and 1,500 representative municipal councils. 90% of the project resources directly benefit the people. The Yemen Social Development Fund provides clean water, education, cultural restoration, and health delivery in rugged rural communities, which decide on their own priorities, contribute a percentage of the costs, and play a key role in maintaining the services themselves. One widely quoted example of poverty reduction in India is the National Rural Employment Guarantee Program, a poverty reduction program implemented by the Government of India, in 2002. It has provided unskilled employment to millions of disadvantaged people, particularly women, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes in rural areas. It is implemented by the Panchayati Raj institutions. Hussein, 2003, in his article on a new paradigm for overcoming poverty says that, if poverty is to be overcome, what is required is to understand the processes of poverty creation, and, to identify the points of intervention in the poverty process through which the poor can be enabled to overcome poverty on a sustainable basis. In this section, you study development paradigms. 1.4 Summary Development is an easy word to say, but a difficult and complicated one to define. Customarily, it has two dimensions, quantitative and qualitative. It is also called growth plus change. There are several paradigms of development such as human well-being, human resources development, social development, sustainable development, inclusive development, development with a human face, and the international impact on development paradigms. Thus, development is a multidimensional concept, where the dimensions are interdependent. Thank you, subscribe to our channel for more updates, and we will see you with the next chapter.